What's going on guys? Justin Fuller, ex-Honda salesman, tech lover, and today, your host. And we're gonna be going over the 2024 Honda Civic Sport. So if you're wondering, how is this different from a 2023 and how does this stack up to other makes and models out in the world? We're gonna go over all that and more. So let's hop on in. got a two liter engine putting out 158 horsepower. I want you to understand something about the engines related to the Honda Civic. The Sport and the LX are both gonna have the same engine, right? The two liter putting out 158. If you go to the EX or the Touring, that's when you're gonna find that 1.5 liter turboed engine that's gonna be putting out 180 horsepower. So just something to keep in mind, while this is named a Sport, it does have the uh, less powered engine, right? Now, Related to the 2023, it's gonna be the exact same engine. So it makes no difference whether you're looking at a 24 or 23, the engine and transmission setup is gonna be the exact same. Now, while we're here, I wanna do a comparison so you can understand how does this car stack up to other makes and models out in the world. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can take a look at it. Now, while that's up, I'll just remind you, if you happen to be in the market looking for one and you happen to be shopping pre-owned as well, understand 23, 22, all of these are gonna be the same when it comes to that engine to transmission, or if you jump over to that hatchback, you're gonna be good there as well. But know that on the horizon at some point, we've got a Civic Hybrid coming out as well. So if gas mileage and traveling is important to you, you might want to hold off. All right, guys, so I want to talk to you about miles per gallon. But before we do that, I just want to point out the beautiful 18-inch glossy wheel that comes on the Sport. You won't find this on any other trim levels. So when you see one rolling around town and it looks kind of cool, chances are it's a Sport model. But let's talk about miles per gallon. So this car gets 30 in the city and 37 on the highway. Now, that is the worst of all the trim levels on the Honda Civic, but I want you to understand that depending on the trim level you pick is going to affect gas mileage. So if you're looking at your LX model, you're going to get 31 in the city and 40 on the highway. Now, when you move to this, you're getting 30 in the city and 37 on the highway. Now, the EX and the Touring, when you move up to that 1.5 liter turbo engine, you're getting 33 in the city and 42 on the highway. So I just want you to understand by trim level, there are some differences. But while we're here, I want to throw up a comparison so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you, if you're looking at a 2023 model, there's not going to be a whole lot of change and difference between the miles per gallon. So you're safe to shop a pre-owned vehicle and still get those same miles per gallon. So if you're wondering what the zero to 60 time is on a Honda Civic Sport, it's 8.8 .8 seconds. To give you an idea, if you're in the Civic Sport Touring hatchback, I think it's 7.3 seconds. And if you're in a Civic Si, it's 6.6 .6 seconds. So in the world of that, it's not much, but if you're racing, I imagine that's quite a bit. But while we're here, I'll throw up a comparison so you can understand how does the 8.8 .8 seconds stack up to some other vehicles out in the world. Take a look at that and we'll keep on rolling. All right, guys, so let's talk about cargo space in this vehicle. So I wanna pull you in and talk to you about some dimensions. So inside of this vehicle, you've got 14.8 cubic feet of cargo space. Now, if you're comparing that to something like a Honda Accord, Accord has 16.7, so not drastically different when it comes to the cargo space. I will point out though, in this model, while these back seats do flip down, it is a single flip down. You don't have the 60-40 split. When you're in this trim, you're gonna have to be in a different trim to get that. Well, I'm back here, I'll point out, car does come with carpeted floor mats so just be aware of that and then if i flip this piece up it does have a spare your spare it's the full height of the regular wheel just not the full width so it's not like a donut where it's typically smaller but understand it's not a full size spare and while we're back here i want to point out this piece right here in case you don't know what it is have you ever run out of gas i have it's embarrassing but it's happened twice in my life once a couple of years ago well i want to talk to you about this piece right here because what this is for is if you run out of gas, I would come to the gas cap and you'll notice that it has a valve on it, right? There's no longer a cap. So I need a way to hold this open if I don't have a gas can to pour gas in. Well, that's where this funnel comes in. I could press this in there to be able to hold that open and then be able to pour gas into the vehicle. Now, related to gas, I wanna point out that this piece is actually connected to your door locks. So when you lock them, this locks. But if this ever gets stuck or you're in a cold climate where maybe the ice kind of freezes and you can't get it open, understand that if you come around to the back of the car, in here, there is a wire up here that you can pull that will actually pop that guy open. All right, guys, so while we're back here talking about space, I mentioned that it's 14.8 cubic feet. So I wanna throw a comparison up so you can see how does this car stack up to other makes and models that are out there in the world. While that's up, I will remind you that if you jump into a 2023 model, it has this same 14.8 cubic feet of cargo space inside of the vehicle, so you're good to go either way. All right, guys, so I wanna stop and take a minute to go over something that I think is really important. And that's when I was selling cars, I, I regularly ran into people who couldn't quite figure out the difference in the trim levels. So we are currently in the sport model, right? 26, I believe 645. Uh, but I want you to understand, 
hey, if I drop down to the LX, one, how much money is that gonna save me? But two, what is the list of items that I'm gonna be giving up, right? So I want you to see that on the screen. And then after you've looked at that, then I wanna talk about going the other way. So if I'm in the sport right now and I'm saying, hey, I'm not sure if this is the vehicle for me, I might wanna jump up to that EX. All right, if I jump up to the EX, how much extra money is that gonna cost me? And then additionally, what extra items is it gonna give me, right? Now, while that's up on the screen, I'll remind you, it is gonna get you some items, but you're also gonna lose some items. The sport's kind of a unique package in the sense that, you know, it offers the 18 inch glossy wheels and paddle shifters and some things that you won't find in the trims above it uh, because it's kind of aimed at a certain crowd. So just be aware of that, but I want you to understand jumping down and jumping up, what are really the differences? So here we are in the second row of this vehicle and I wanna to talk to you about a couple different things. The first is the interior, right? So you're gonna see a black interior that's cloth with a leather finish down the middle and then up in the front I've got a leather steering wheel so they do kind of a hybrid mix of cloth and leather in this vehicle in the sport it only comes in a black interior so if that's gonna be an issue for you understand this might not be the trim level for you but I want to talk to you about leg space. I'm six foot and I weigh 200 and roughly 50 pounds, right? I can sit behind the seat pushed all the way back. So me as the driver sitting behind me, I'm okay. I'm comfortable. I can move my legs. You've got 37.4 inches of leg space in this vehicle. So I want to throw a comparison up on the screen so you can see how does this car stack up to other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll remind you, if you are shopping in a 2023, it is going to be the exact same leg space. I think you can probably see the theme at this point. 23 and 24 are pretty much the, the, the identical same car, right? Um, so just something to keep in mind. All right, guys, so here we are in the front row, and I want to talk to you about a couple different things. First is leg space. Inside of this front row, you have got 42.3 inches of leg space. That is the exact same in the 2023 and the 2024, so nothing to worry about there. But while we're here, I want to throw up a comparison so you can see how does the leg space in this vehicle stack up to other makes and models out there in the world. While that's on the screen, I want to point out a couple things. Just to show you the interior of this vehicle, I'm going to flip this around so that you can see you've got a black interior with somewhat of a racing stripe that kind of runs down the middle and then that continues as we work our way down here so that's the look that you're getting when you're in here and then you can see i've got the leather along the sides so in the back i had the leather around the middle leather down the sides leather on the steering wheel as well now if you're saying justin talk to me about seats are they powered are they not powered well let me let you know neither one of these seats is powered and you're not going to find that on the ex either you're going to have to climb all the way up to the touring model at the touring model they give you a powered seat on both sides but if you're looking for power it's not going to be in this trim line. All right, guys, so chances are if you're a Civic shopper, there's gonna be a couple things that are important to you. One is gonna be, does it have a touchscreen? Does it have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? And then what is the stereo like? You know, give me an idea. So I wanna talk to you about all three of those things. So depending on the trim level of this vehicle that you pick, you are gonna either have a seven inch touchscreen, much like you're gonna see in this vehicle, or a nine inch touchscreen. Now, that is all gonna depend on trim. So I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can understand trim level and the correlating audio system that goes with it. Your LX model is gonna come with a 160 watt speaker system, and I believe it's four speakers. Uh, connected to a seven inch touchscreen just like this one. Now, when you move to the Sport and the EX, you're gonna be looking at still the seven inch touchscreen, but now you're looking at a 180 watt uh, speaker system with eight speakers. Now, if you happen to move all the way up to that touring model, that's when you're gonna see the nine inch touchscreen, so a little bit bigger, and then a 12 speaker Bose system, which they keep a secret as far as the wattage, but from what I understand, it's roughly around 300 watts. While we're here, I'll just point out, you know, if you wanna crank it up, it's decent. It's not awesome, but it's decent. I would say, hey, buy a sub, hook it up, you know, get this going and kind of get those base levels that you want. Uh, but you could easily get by with what you have inside of this vehicle. Now this vehicle does come with Apple CarPlay. So I just want to take a minute to talk to you about the touchscreen and kind of what comes along with that. Now I will point out that the Apple CarPlay system is wired. So a little bit of a bummer that Honda hasn't just decided to make all of them wireless, but I did recently read that they're starting with the Accords and they're going to offer for like 120 bucks. Uh, they can connect it up and make it wireless for you. So right now they're just doing Accords, but I imagine it'll make its way through the rest of the vehicles. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit of that later. Now, related to the screen here, if you're using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you probably have a familiarity with that, right? It pulls in apps from your phone and you can take advantage of them and use them on your screen. Understand you can customize a lot of this. Perfect examples, I've set up to where you can make a custom phone call directly to me and quick actions, right? So if I wanna to touch this, it'll immediately direct me to the nearest gas station uh, and go Get find it, right? And you. take me to where I wanna go. So understand there's some different things you can do. If you've never seen my tips and trick videos, I show how to do that. I show how to customize the background, how to rearrange the order of these uh, and plenty more. Uh, so just know that that's available to you. I'll throw it up in the top of the screen so you can check it out. It'll be in the description of the video. Now, when you leave this portion of it, right, if I jump away from the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto setup, right, this is when things get kind of bad, guys. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. If you're just using the basic system, this is what you get. You get a color grading of grays uh, and a very generic look at that, right? So when I'm jumping through here to different things, they are really banking on the idea that you are going to be using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because if you don't, it's not much to look at. So just something to be aware of. 
Now, while I'm here, I'll point out that, of course, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you have the advantage to use several of the apps, but you don't have access to things like Netflix and Prime uh, and Hulu and Disney Plus and some of those apps that you may want to take advantage of. And then there's other apps, right? Maybe you want some of your work apps. If you're a remote worker, you want Teams or you want uh, Slack or whatever the case may be in case you need to run errands and you can kind of keep an eye on things. Well, you can't get that here, but I do have a solution that will solve that. So you may be looking at the screen right now going, wait a minute, this guy's got a lot of apps that I can't get through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Things like Netflix or things like the Play Store where I can jump in and go find an app that I want and download it, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm using a, a CarPlay kit box, right? So I am currently using this. This is the CPC 200T box, right? So what this does is essentially turn your phone screen into a tablet, right? So it gives you the ability to come in and say, hey, I wanna jump into the Play Store and then I wanna go download whatever app I want, right? So this way now, if you wanna be able to trade crypto while you're sitting here, you absolutely can. You wanna get on DoorDash, whatever you wanna go download, you absolutely can go get it. So super cool that this allows you to do it. What I really like about this is it gives me the ability that while I'm sitting here, one, if I wanted to set up to look like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I've got that. Two, I can jump in here and run searches. And then three, I wanna be able to jump over and watch streaming services, right? So maybe I'm taking a long road trip or maybe I'm just hanging out with friends or maybe I'm waiting to pick somebody up. It'd be really nice if I could jump into Netflix and watch a show or drive down the road and be able to listen to that show, right? Maybe I got some stand-up comedy that I wanna pull up and I wanna be able to watch a show and get down the road as I go. I can absolutely do that with this system. So what this does is unlock all of the apps, right? It gives you the full potential to take advantage of your vehicle, right? So if I wanted to come in here and say, cool, I wanna watch this, all right, we'll click into it and start watching it, right? You can do the same with any of the other apps that you wanna take advantage of like Apple TV, or maybe you wanna use Hulu, or maybe you wanna use HBO Max, uh, all of those things. So really cool that you can do this and take advantage of this. Now, there's other cool things that you can do this that I really like. So right now you can see I kind of have a split screen setup. But what I do like is I can split other apps as well. So if I came in here and said, okay, cool, I wanna have a couple different things running. I wanna open up YouTube and have that running because maybe I'm watching something uh, on there. But then additionally, I wanna split the screen, right? I can do that. I can split the screen with other apps. So if I had something else up and running that I wanted to split it with, I could pick what that app is and then split the screen and have them both running at the exact same time. So super cool that you can do this. So it really gives you a lot of different things that you can take advantage of. Now I'm gonna jump back out of this for a second because I wanna show you something. If you jump into just a single app, what I really like about this is let me jump into Spotify and kind of show you. When you get into Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it kind of affects the usage of the app, right? If I wanna run a search on Apple CarPlay, I have to use the voice command. And that can be a big pain in the butt because sometimes it just doesn't get my voice. It's really nice here that I can just type it in or I could have the person sitting on the side of the car type it for me. But you know, when I'm in here, I can also do things like once I found an artist that I wanna listen to, I can jump into them and it will show me all of the content related to them, right? So their popular song, it'll pull up their discography, it'll pull up, you know, the radio stations and things that sound like them all of this additional information that you can't necessarily get through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So really cool system. If you're interested in this box, I wanna to talk to you about a couple things. One, the box is $155, so it's not that expensive. In the grand scheme of things, I've reviewed a lot of these boxes and previously they're like two and three and $400 where I was like, man, I don't know if that's worth it, but 155 bucks. Now, I am one of their affiliates because I review a lot of cars and a lot of products, so I have a coupon code. So if you wanna take advantage of this, I can get this knocked down with my coupon code down to 127 and 10 cents. So pretty sweet deal. Now, this takes me back to what I originally mentioned a long time ago, and that's that uh, Honda is gonna start, right? They're starting with the Accords and they're offering to make ca uh, CarPlay wireless, right? That's cool that I could be wireless for a hundred and roughly, I think 20 bucks and then whatever labor the dealerships, you know, charges me to install it. But for $127, I could buy one of these, plug it in myself and then have access to all the apps. To me, this is a, a, an easy deal, right? It makes a lot of sense. So just something to be aware of. There is something down the road if you wanna take advantage of that, or if you're interested in something like this, you can get it for 127 bucks. I'll throw a link up in the description. Also, I've made a, a, a little bit deeper dive review on this that I'll throw uh, in the description and up at the top of the screen so you can check it out if you absolutely want to. So just something to keep in mind if you're trying to get a little bit more out of the touchscreen of your car. So I wanna to talk to you about the steering wheel, a couple safety features, and then we'll send you down the road, right? So your steering wheel, one, it's leather wrapped. That's part of the sport package. Over here is where you're gonna be able to take control of a lot of what you're seeing right there. So my home button will get me to that menu and then I can scroll through all these different options. I'm not gonna walk you through all those different options there. You can go look those, but I just want you to understand the basic one that I wanna talk about here in a minute is safety support, right? But while we're here, I just wanna point out, you know, jumping between different things, you know, changing your audio, jumping tracks, sources, XM, you know, AM, FM, Bluetooth, you know, whatever you're taking advantage of, all gonna live right there. And then your voice command button, right? I can press this and tap it for Honda. I can press and hold if I wanna take advantage of Google or Siri, right? So if you have that connected. 
connected up, right? So that's this side. On the other side is where you're gonna have some safety features, right? So the, there's two of them that are sitting here, and then I'll talk about the remaining ones uh, that exist, right? So the first two I wanna talk about, lane keep assist. If I press this button, you're gonna see this same symbol come on up here in the steering wheel. And what it does is it uses a camera up here to detect lines on the road. So when I'm going down the road, if I start to drift out of my lane, it'll actually correct for me. It'll, it'll move the steering wheel to help pull me back into the lane that I should be in. So a pretty cool safety feature to take advantage of, right? The other one is gonna be related to your cruise control. When I'm driving down the road, I can get up to the speed I want and press this. That will then hold the speed and you'll see that indicator come on here. I can then press this button. The more boxes that you see up here in the indicator, right, the more space it's gonna keep between me and the car in front of me. It's using radar down in the grill to bounce off the car in front of me. So what that means is if I'm going 70 miles an hour and the guy gets in front of me going 55, it'll slow my car down and keep that designated space that I pick between us. And then when I get out from behind him, it'll take me back up to my speed. So that way I don't have to turn it off, turn it back on. So great for like road trips, right? Now, that's two of these features. Now, when you come over to the other side now, you can see I've selected these safety features and I wanna talk about those. The first is road departure mitigation. This one is similar to lane keep assist. And what that is, is if I start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it can be an all alert and vibrate the wheel to be like, hey, wake up, pay attention. You know, chances are you're getting drowsy. The next one is collision mitigation braking system. So this one kind of uses those same things as the adapter cruise control. It's using that radar to detect cars in front of me. If it's looking like I'm a rear in another car, it can actually give me an all alert, flash in that action, then actually apply the brakes to help prevent the accident from me rear-ending another car. So super cool features as far as safety goes in this vehicle that you can take advantage of. And this is in every trim. Doesn't matter if you're in the LX or you're in the very top model, they're all gonna get these features. All right, guys, so we made it through the entire video and now I wanna take you back and walk you through all those comparisons. So if you miss one or you need a refresher, we're gonna get that for you. So starting at the front of this car, this car has a two liter engine putting out 158 horsepower. Now. If you're comparing that to other makes and models out in the world, I'm gonna throw that up on the screen. While it's up on the screen, I'm gonna remind you that there are two different trim level versions of the engine, right? There's the two liter engine, there's a 1.5 liter that gets that 180 horsepower. So just something to keep in mind in case you're out there looking uh, and trying to decide what you wanna do. Now, let's talk about miles per gallon. This car gets 30 in the city and 37 on the highway. So I'm gonna throw that comparison up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and the models out there. While that's up, I'll remind you, depending on the trim level, it will affect gas mileage. Your LS gets 31 in the city and 40 on the highway. This gets 30 in the city and 37 on the highway. If you go up to that EX or that Touring that uses that 1.5 liter, then you're, I believe, at 33 in the city and 42 on the highway. So understand trim level does affect the miles per gallon in this vehicle. Now, when you get into the front row of this vehicle, you've got 42.3 inches of leg space. It's quite a bit. Like I have a, I have tons of space in this car. Uh, six foot 250, right? So lots of space to work with. You're good to go. But I went through a comparison up so you can see how does this car stack up to other makes and models out in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you, doesn't matter, 23, 24, exact same when it comes to the leg space in this vehicle. Uh, now, when you jump into the second row, you saw me earlier, I was sitting behind myself just like this. I still had some space, right? 37.4 inches of leg space in the second row of this vehicle. So I'm gonna throw that comparison up so you can see how does the leg space in this car stack up to other makes and models out there in the world. After you're looking at that, let's talk about cargo space, right? Or trunk space. You have 14.8 cubic feet of cargo space in this vehicle with that single fold down seat, right? So understand 60, 40 is gonna be at a different trim level. But I wanna throw a comparison up so you can understand how does that cargo space stack up to other makes and models out there in the world? While it's up, I'll just remind you, uh, it doesn't matter, 23, 24 is gonna be the exact same as space. And you already know, depending on the trim level, you can get that 60, 40 split if that's something you're interested in. So that is the majority of that. Anything else, you might just have to rewind and watch it again. But I wanna ask you for a couple favors. One, I hope you'll press the like button. I hope you appreciate the way I present the content and you like what I'm doing. Second, I hope you'll leave a comment. If you feel like I missed something or you have a question, I hope you will leave a comment uh, to let me know and we can ask and kind of figure this out together. Uh, or if it's something you wish I'd add in, right? Zero to 60 times was something I used to never do and a guy asked, so I started putting it in. Third, I wanna ask if you'll subscribe to the channel so that when I produce content like this, you will get it. And then four, share the video, man. If you got a friend who's looking at civics uh, and, and kind of wants to know and is shopping around, I hope you'll share the video with them so they can check it out. So. Other than that, like, comment, subscribe, all the things. Let it go!